last month uh, on our school board, as well as he has a flooring company which is titled Metal Art Kyle. Metal Art Kyle. So the success of Mr. Westbrook and the things he's done, and uh, I already learned where the front door of the school used to be when he graduated, which is something I didn't know. And we can thank Mrs. Unruh once again for her uh, scavenging of these speakers for us. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Westbrook. I 
about a year, I was there for about two and a half years, and about a year in, I knew it wasn't really what I wanted to do long term, but there were a lot of great contacts there, uh, a lot of opportunity to learn, and a lot of opportunity to move up in my career, um, even if I knew it wasn't doing exactly what I was at that point. So, with that, I rolled in uh, December 2010, I left the bank, and I took a step, what would feel like backwards in my career, and I went back to work for myself. And I, I took a huge leap of faith. Um, I had one job lined up for a friend, and I was going back into doing plumbing, heating, and air, and handyman type work. Uh, one small, probably five day drywall job was all I had lined up to do. Uh, but I was, I was determined, and I was uh, very persistent, and I had a goal in mind for where I wanted to end up. My plan, looking back, I thought was really solid. It was probably a little sketchy, uh, but I made it work. So today what we're going to look at um, is success and how that applies to each of you in academics, athletics, life, career, and any other way you can possibly put it into context. Um, I'll kind of book in here because I know it's tough to, I've been in your seats, it's been a while, it's tough to keep your concentration. Um, so I'm going to be short and sweet and we're going to try to cover this pretty quick. So you can see here, there's going to be three main points we're going to talk about success. This is a success triangle. I didn't build this, I modified it to kind of fit what, what I feel works for me. But the main pieces we're going to touch are attitude, knowledge, and skills and how, are you, how you are in control of that, and how that would be the driving force behind your success. Uh, is there anybody here who wants to try to define success? A, a dictionary definition? Nobody, okay. It's really simple. It's, in, it's an accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. So an aim or purpose is your goal, and if you accomplish that, if you set, if you set any of these factors into motion and you accomplish that goal, you're successful. It is a very personal accomplishment. Um, you, you can look at it from team aspects, uh, group aspects. We're not going to really work on that today. It's going to be more about you and how you can become successful in, like I said, anything you want to do. Um, I said it is, it's personal, not individual, because rarely do you ever accomplish something entirely on your own. That, that is a, a rare feat. Um, there's always somebody who has, who has helped you along the way, um, provided something for you as a tool in order to get you to that point. Um, for me, after I had gone back to work for myself years down the road, I, I had built a pretty stable business. I had different areas of it that were growing faster than others, and I was making decisions on what I wanted to do um, as far as, as uh, specializing in one area or not, where I wanted to grow and how I wanted to do it. I chose flooring as my way to go because I had um, some additional background in that. Uh, when I was at the bank, I kind of moonlighted with my now wife, with her brother. He had a flooring company. And I kind of moonlighted with him, so I had a pretty good background in that. That was all commercial work, uh, doing flooring for businesses, uh, not residential, not in people's homes. Uh, I wanted, and at the time, and from 2010 to 2017, um, I had been primarily residential. I worked in people's homes doing remodeling, uh, renovations, you know, some new build. I wanted to get back into the commercial flooring for a couple of reasons. One, there was a lot of money. And two, the flexibility and time and schedule uh, would allow me to, to focus on other areas in my life that I, that I really felt were important. So in 2017, I had gone, I had geared towards flooring, and I was putting a plan together on how to get uh, to my goals. And I ran across a man by the name of Marvin Pritchard uh, through a Craigslist ad. I was selling a lawnmower, 
and he came to see he came to see my lawnmower. He wanted it to uh, take it to a cabin he had and use that. He didn't buy my mower. But I talked with Marvin a little bit about what I've been doing, uh, some things I had done, where I wanted to be. We exchanged information, and he said, "Yeah, I'll give you a call sometime if I need something." I didn't expect to ever hear from this guy. A month later, he calls me and said, "Hey, Alex, I've got a job I want to get you in on. Um, can you do this? The problem is it has to start tomorrow, and..." You know, no one stands or butts about it, that's the way it is. Can you do it? And I said, yeah, I can do that. I'll, I'll make it work on my schedule. We went in, we did the job, knocked it out of the park, and that was a building block, the first point where um, I really felt like I was gaining some traction towards my goal of, of growing my business and getting it into the direction where I had hoped it would go. Uh, we finished that job, didn't have another one lined up, on the commercial side with him or anybody else, there was a pretty big lull there again, uh, a few months. And then Marvin called me again out of the blue. Um, I had emailed with him a couple times, but hadn't had any uh, real personal contact. He needed a, another job done. It was a Wendy's down in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, it was, I had done a, some Arby's work prior to, and he knew that. Um, the, the projects were really similar, so he shoot me in and he put me in on this on this Wendy's project. Long story short, we go down there, we knock that out, it's great. A couple weeks after we finished that job, I got a call out of the blue from somebody. I didn't even know the guy and I don't remember his name now. There was a huge apartment complex going up uh, directly behind that Wendy's in Stillwater. And what it ended up being is was privately funded student housing for Oklahoma State University. It was a massive project. Uh, just on the tile side, we ended up doing about 50,000 square feet. Uh, total project, I think, had about 750,000 square feet floor covering. We knew what we were doing, and we weren't prepared for that size of scale. Um, this, this guy called me, wanted me to bid this. I had never bid anything that size. I didn't really know the, the processes and procedures of a project like that. Um, so, I've, so I've had some contacts who had been uh, involved in projects like that or similar to it. I talked with them, we got a plan in place, and we got that put together. The main piece of all three of those stories that brings them together is that before I had that opportunity, I had prepared myself <clears throat> with knowledge and skills and many other aspects here that we're going to go over in a minute um, that allowed me to secure those contracts and secure the projects that, that got me to that next level, that helped me move up in that, in that chain. Um, when I took on that AVID project, that, that uh, apartment complex in Stillwater. I was realigning some insurance requirements and whatnot, and in downtown here, Tony Wheel at Act 360 made a very simple statement to me, which changed the course of how I looked at success and, and progress, preparation, opportunity, everything as a whole. I was, re I was changing my insurance around, I told him, I said, I said, Tony, I got so lucky on this thing. I said, this thing just landed in my lap. This project, it's where I want to be, it's what I want to do. The scale of it is, is huge. This is a life changing experience for me, a life changing project. And he told me, he said, You didn't get lucky. He said, All luck is, is when preparation meets opportunity. And that hit me, and I thought, Man, that is, that is huge. Because if you look at that, if you, if you look at luck, is preparation plus opportunity. And if you substitute that out, and if you put success in there, that's when you get really, really powerful. Uh, with your goals and your success. And that's when it becomes really personal. Because your preparation 
is dependent on what you're willing to put into it. And or your success is dependent on what you're willing to put into your preparation. These opportunities are going to come along. And as you have more success and more opportunities come your way, uh, your growth and your goals will change and come up with that. So the first piece that I want to look at here of this of this success triangle is attitude. And I'll run through these real quick here, and then if anybody will, will look at individual pieces of it. But your motivation and confidence uh, are huge pieces because if, if you don't have a motive, if you don't have a reason for your goal, then that goal is a wash. Like, because you're not going to be committed to it, and you are not going to drive through and push for it if you don't have that motive. You've got to be confident in it. You've got to be confident in yourself that you can actually do this. There will be weak moments in there where you where you know you're second guessing yourself and you'll think maybe maybe this isn't for me, maybe I've got myself in too deep. But if you maintain that confidence, and if you skip down here to persistence, you will charge through that and you will get to your end goal. Honesty and integrity as, as one. Uh, that will set a bar for you uh, to maintain your level of excellence even when nobody's looking. Uh, for what I do now, we do a lot of night work and a lot of times um, owners or managers, anybody in charge essentially, is not around. And when, when we're in restaurants, so we, we work in, you pick a restaurant out there, uh, a chain restaurant out there, and we work in it. And, and we cover a 500 mile radius. So, which is, is roughly Minneapolis to Dallas, Denver to St. Louis. And, and we're in these places at night, and these owners, these ownership groups, they've got to trust us that we're going to, number one, not destroy their store, and two, get the work done in a, in a satisfactory manner. But we could skip a lot of steps and we could get by under the radar, you know, working underneath equipment, back in kitchens. They've never had any idea if we did the work that we were contracted to, to do or not. Um, that'll be the same for you in academics, athletics. You can, you can load through your, your workouts or whatever. You can make it look like you're working hard. You can be uh, pushing a lot of weight, but maybe it's not what you really need to be doing. You know, maybe, maybe what's, what looks like you are doing your best to somebody else Maybe that internally is not actually your best. You're in control of that. You go to optimism, enthusiasm, um, the shiny new exciting piece of a goal at some point will wear off. You're going to get into a grind uh, to where your enthusiasm is going to tail off. Your your optimism about it, but man, I've been I've been working on this and I I've been grinding. I've not gotten where I want to be. This is hard. Uh, those pieces right there, they're tough because, like I say, they, they do fade. And that's where your commitment, persistence, discipline, all of that comes into play because you've got to grind through that tough, that tough stage of it. I'm a football guy, so I figure these guys over here know too. I mean, anybody who plays a sport knows. You get into that late third quarter, early fourth quarter, that's a grind. You're, you're playing, you've been busting the whole game, and you feel like, man, we're still locked up, we're tied up at whatever the score may be, and we've got to figure out some way to get over that hump to get to victory, to hit our goal. It's a grind. Mental, physical, every aspect of it. Humility and adaptable, adaptability. Um, you've got to be fluid in, in what you're willing to do. Um, You've just got to be able to take, just roll with the punches, is what I say a lot. Um, you know, don't be, don't be so set in your way that you're unwilling to, to uh, make a change or, or adjust to what's coming your way. The next piece we look at here on this triangle is knowledge. Um, this is where you're building uh, the, the baseline for the know-how of what you're of how you're going to get to your goal. You've collected information, you've got a lot of facts, you have theories, I'm a big systems and processes guy, repetition um, makes perfection, is what I say. 
A lot of what I do in my life, um, I do it the same way every time because it works. Um, learning, um, just the ability to absorb what's coming your way and what is around you, and then figuring out how to apply that into your attitude and your skills to get you to your goal. Leverage, this is a big piece. You're going to find out that each of you individually have a skill or knowledge or something that is better than anybody else in this room or anybody else you will ever encounter in your life. Once you figure that out and figure out what it is, that's where you gain power to get to your goal. Leverage your knowledge and leverage your skills and especially your attitude um, to get where you're trying to go. On the skill side, goal setting. If you can't, if you can't figure out the, uh, what you want to do to set a goal, it, it's really tough to to have a goal if you can't figure out what your goal really is. So you got to work through all the all the muck and the mire to figure out exactly what it is you're after. Then implement a strategy and time management to get there. Your application and reasoning piece, your recognition piece, um, has to deal with um, taking your information facts, digesting it, and putting it into play. Um, then you get into physical and non-physical skills, um, and one of the, also the next one of your most important pieces is your interpersonal, your communication, um, your actions and reactions to uh, people and things around you, and especially um, reactions to things that you can't control. Um, if, you, if you're one that constantly uh, blows up or gets overly excited or overly down when, when something happens in the, in the course of, of going towards your goal, it's going to affect these other pieces for you here and it's going to throw you off course. Uh, Self-control is a big piece of it also. So I think what I want to try to do right now, I think with a lot of information, um, do I, does a student, anybody want to volunteer to uh, maybe come up or, or just state a goal that you may have up here? A paleontologist. Okay. My, my son wants to visit you when you get there. I promise. Um, so what, what we're going to do here is figure out, what's your name? William? Okay. We're going to go through here at this triangle and we're going to figure out what William needs to do or what he can do to end up at his end goal of being, being a paleontologist. Anybody have any ideas for, on the attitude side, what William is going to need? Confidence. Yeah. Confidence in his ability and confidence in uh, his, his physical skills and knowledge to be able to do this. Did I have another one over here? Dedication to his work. Dedication to his work. Absolutely. Motivation. Motivation. I'm sorry? Patience. Yeah, yeah. I think paleontology would take a lot more patience than I would ever have. Commitment. Uh, adaptable. Adaptable. Adaptability. Yep. Honesty. Honesty. <laughs> Honesty. Integrity. All that. Let's move down to the knowledge piece. What William will need. Facts. I have to imagine there's going to be some schooling that's going to need to go along with that to build uh, theories and information to digest the facts. Learning. Learning. I'm sorry. Information. Yep. Going along with the, the 
schooling and digesting information. Okay, let's go over here to physical skills. Time management. Time management. Good. Goal setting. Goal setting. <laughs> Strategy. Strategy. Time. Time. One more. Application. Good. So we've run through these. We've put a little bit of an idea of how William can be successful in his goal to be a paleontologist. It's pretty good. Who thinks William is going to be successful in that? That's great. That's great. I'm glad you do, but there's no guarantee William will be successful. Because he has to go through this. He has to stay motivated, confident, dedicated, persistent, disciplined. All of these fall back on him. Because no matter, it doesn't matter at all, it does matter, but all of you cannot make William all of these things. When he wakes up in the morning, he's got to look himself in the mirror, own it, and put in application each one of these things to get himself to this goal. That's why I say, go ahead. What's a paleontologist? A paleontologist, a dinosaur digger. <laughs> they, they do plenty of other things also. That's, what, that's why I said my son wants to be, he, my son wants to meet you when you become a paleontologist when you're digging T-Rex out of the, out of the Utah sand or wherever. So, we, we see, we see how the struggle comes together to get William to his, to his goal of being a paleontologist. Um, is there anybody else who has a goal here who wants to share something? Okay. Orthopedic surgeon. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. What of these do you feel like you that you currently are that will help you become an orthopedic surgeon? You're confident and you're motivated. Knowledge. Learning and processes. Learning and processes. Good. You're, if you're willing to, if, if, if you are motivated to become and confident that you can get there, there is a lot of learning and process to go on with that. Persistence, commitment, discipline, all of that's going to take part. Take part of it. How about the physical, the physical traits or the, the, the skills? Time management and strategy. I can assure you, a big piece of that will be time management. My brother's a doctor, and um, I watched him uh, manage the clock and make more minutes and more hours in a day than there actually are in order for him to get through all of his studies and uh, what was required of them to get to that point now. Awesome. I'm going to pick on Mr. Jet Vincent over here. Hi, Jet. Jet doesn't know me. I don't know Jet. I've never actually spoken to him, but I've watched him a lot on the football field and uh, the basketball court, and I've watched him handle himself a little bit uh, just in the hallways and the off times when I've seen him. Jet is going to Colorado State to play football and continue his education. I can tell you, he's motivated, confident, honest. He has high morals. He can handle himself. He's optimistic, I'm sure. I've been there. I've signed uh, to go play ball at college. It is an exciting time. Enthusiasm. He's committed. He's, he has dedicated years of his life to excellence and the work that it takes to grind in the weight room, out on the field, uh, building relationships with teammates, coaches, uh, parents, community members, all of the people who, who uh, support you and get you through your day-to-day, -day, he's done that. 
Persistent, disciplined, he's humble, he's adaptable. Things don't go your way. You change, you adapt, you make it work, don't you? The knowledge piece, there's multiple different schemes, multiple different uh, processes, uh, different ideas from coaches, players, whatever. You deal with that, you build on it, and you grow. He set goals. I've heard him say before in, in interviews that he had a goal to play Division One football. He set that goal and he attained it, or will attain it. He had a strategy, he worked in the weight room, he was coachable. Managed his time, he applied his skills, applied his knowledge, applied his relationships with people around him to help him get to that point. Physical skills, interpersonal skills, when you go on recruiting meetings, it's an interview process, isn't it? They're checking you out as much as you're checking them out. To reach that goal, he had to have communication and interpersonal skills to sell himself, just like you will, to sell yourself to uh, a teacher, an employer, uh, a babysitter, anybody down the road. Raising an application. So, as you, as you work through this, you will find out that as you attain, as you attain goals you set for yourself, you will come across growth. You will come across more responsibility, more opportunities, and you have a responsibility to add value to others. So, so for me, in my personal life and in my growth of my, of my career, um, today is a growth piece for me. I've never spoken to anybody or any, any group more than probably five or ten people, and, and especially never in a, an organized setting like this. Um, what you need to do, part, part of growth is realizing that uh, when you've attained a level of success for yourself, and you've done it time and time and time again, People are always watching you. Um, that's, why, that's why when you're growing up and you've got younger siblings, your parents tell you, you know, be careful what you're doing. Your, your brother or your sister are watching you. There's always somebody watching you. And a responsibility of that, um, like when Mrs. Underwood asked me to come speak today, maybe I was a little nervous about that. I had no idea exactly what I was going to say. But what I had to realize is that the growth piece for me is that she has seen something in me and she's seen me succeed uh, to, to attain my goals time over time over time, and she felt like I had something to share that would be valuable for you. Uh, so the responsibility of that is to, to you know, is to go, go do some things, put yourself in situations that may be a little uncomfortable, but that is where you grow. Opportunities will come around, uh, when you don't even realize it. Keep yourself prepared for that opportunity. Uh, Mrs. Under told me a story about her son, Justin. He's, he's a pilot. And uh, they, he, was, uh, he was flying a flight with, a, with another pilot who was difficult to, to deal with. And they, they got off the flight. They went to a Starbucks, I believe it was, in the airport. He stepped that oh Starbucks yeah in 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 the airport and uh, this other pilot was was arrogant and uh, just extremely difficult to deal with he lacked this humility they went up to the to the Starbucks counter talked to the breeze that he ordered a drink that he wanted his arrogance said that he was going to get it he was rude um, Requested it, demanded it, in fact. And that barista, uh, who, you know, maybe would think is not as qualified, not as, uh, has not attained as many goals as this, as this pilot, she realized that she had leverage. And she put a pretty good strategy together to put this guy in his place, and she told him, we don't have those ingredients to make your drink. And he didn't get it. 
Justin walked up to the counter. I know Justin. He's humble. He's honest. He's moral. He's confident. He asked her. And he's also, he's also persistent. And he asked her if they had the ingredients for that drink. Or if it was a problem with the pilot. He got that drink. And it was because he just approached her in a, in a normal, respectful manner. So what that, what that barista had was strength, power, and leverage over that pilot. So just because you were in a position where society says you maybe aren't as important as somebody else, don't ever second, that second guess the importance and the power you have where you are. Always be prepared to make that next step up. Along with your growth, opportunities and responsibility will, will come the time when you need to add value to others. When you're starting out in your, in your education career, your athletic uh, career, uh, work, work life, any, any aspect of life, when you're starting out, you're reaching up here. You're needing help from somebody else to attain your goal. And, and it will always be that way. But you will attain certain levels of success and certain goals um, where you're able to come down here and you're able to help somebody else attain their goals. And, and when you get to that position, the power you have with that, um, that's on you to use that appropriately and, and wisely because you don't ever want to beat somebody down when, they, when they've got a goal. Even if you don't think um, that's the best goal for them, or you may think it's silly, whatever the, whatever the case is, um, if you have a way to help them attain that, that becomes your responsibility to do that. Uh, so, I told you I'd be short and sweet, so I'm going to try to try to close this down here. Um, as part of my add value to others, for me, um, I, Mr. Vincent touched on it that I was elected to the school board, and um, that was that was one way a year. And a couple of months ago, I decided that uh, I would run for run for the school board I was elected on, and I had a certain responsibility. Um, I had several people in the community come to me and ask me if I would run. They felt like I would be a good voice for you and other people in the community. And it wasn't really on my radar of things I wanted to do. Um, I gave a lot of thought about it, a lot, a lot of thought to it. I prayed about it, and ended up it was I decided that, that is one way I was responsible to add value back to others. So I just want to say thank you to all of you again for letting me come in and speak, uh, Mr. Vincent, Mrs. Unruh. Uh, continue your hard work and uh, round the people up to come do this lecture series. Thank you. Any, uh, any pressing questions before we go back to class? Any questions? You don't have to go back to class this week. Mrs. Sumner, good job. I actually, I don't like you. I don't think a lot of them realize who you are, who you belong to. I just want you to touch a little bit on, I know how people are ready to speak. Just a little bit about that. Okay. Um,
per se, so make sure you enjoy the ride coming up. Um, the people that you spend time with day in and day out here in this community, uh, they, they truly, genuinely do love you and they do care for you. And, uh, you know, that was me growing up in this community, I, I felt that a lot. I had a lot of guidance. Um, a lot of people would reach out to, to talk to when I had questions. Um, people to go to, you know, maybe you're not comfortable talking to your friends or, or your parents or anybody about something, but a lot of people. Pardon the interruption. Page votes. Please report to the office. Page, please report to the office. Thank you. A lot of times there is somebody in your life, you know, that you uh, are willing to, to speak to about something. And uh, just uh, cherish those relationships like that. And, and you'll, you'll get old, you'll get old like me, and you may be asking my parents to speak about something sometime. And um, you'll, you'll look back at it, and you will have a, a truly uh, different view and, and appreciation for it. I don't know if that's what you wanted me to say or not. But. Yeah, I guess I was going towards two. You're the expectations your parents have on you. Oh. Yeah, I, I was expected to... Um, obviously be at school every day, uh, have good grades. I was expected to be respectful, kind, uh, caring, you know, just a, a general good person. And there was a standard in my household that was set that if you, if you step below that bar, uh, there were repercussions for it. And that, that would be on any kind of level that you come across in life, uh, whether it be personal, professional, whatever. Um, you, you've got you've to draw that line in the sand and not cross that. Anything else for Mr. Westbrook? If not, one more round of applause. <laughs> So I meant to touch on that and I, and I skipped over it. So, so the exact opposite of success is failure. And you're going to fail. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts. You're going to fail at something at some point in your life. And the way you handle that failure, the way you dig back into here and, and you find out where your weak, weak link was in this, when you do that, when you can be real honest with yourself and say, Man, I, I screwed up right here at this point. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't diligent with my time. I, I wasted time flipping, you know, scrolling on the phone or whatever. I, I wasted time and I wasn't, I wasn't efficient with that. Um, then you can go back and you can correct that piece. You may or may not have the opportunity to attain that same goal, but you'll have that piece of your preparation prepared for the next time. Anybody else? That's a good question. I will uh, take a picture of this board and send it out in an email to all of you because I think it's good information to have. So, one last round of applause. Thank you for the Yeah, I was looking for this. Oh, yeah. First of all, where, what, where? They're baby toys. Joker.